Ladies and gentlemen, once again, good evening and welcome to Matchroom Headquarters here in Brentwood, Essex, England. We are live on the zone for the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the vacant IBF Featherweight Championship of the World. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We are sponsored by Betfred, StubHub, Wow Hydrate, and JD Sports. This bout is sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control. The General Secretary is Dennis Gilmartin and the International Boxing Federation. The President, Mr. Daryl J. Peoples, the Supervisor, Roberto Rea. Introducing your three judges scoring this world title contest from ringside. From Belgium, Vincent Dupas. From Germany, Holger Wieman. And from England, Bob Williams. At the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring, also from England, A-star referee, Mr. Michael Alexander. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the four corners of the world to the four corners of this ring, right here at Matchroom Headquarters in Brentwood, Essex, England. This is it. The time has come. The fight starts now! <laughs> Introducing first, Fighting out of the red corner, standing with his head trainers, George Yvonne and Derry Matthews. He wears the black and gold. He scaled eight stone, 13 pounds, three ounces. His professional record, 30 victories, three defeats. He has 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he makes his second attempt at a world title, fighting out of Liverpool, England. Here is the former English, British, and the reigning IBF and WBO European champion, James Jazza Dickens! Dickens! and his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He stands with his head trainer, Dominic Engel. He wears the white with the black trim. He scaled eight stone, 13 pounds at nine ounces. His professional record, 27 victories, only one defeat. He has 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he also makes his second attempt at a world title, fighting out of the steel city of Sheffield, England. Here is the former British, Commonwealth, European, WBC International, and IBF Intercontinental Champion, Kid Gallagher! Gallagher! Well, as you both know the rules, so let's just have a good, clean fight, okay? Most of all, you to defend yourselves at all times, all right? Let's go. Well, how the landscape of this division has changed in the last few months, and tonight it may well change again. IBF featherweight world title on the line if we find the winner. The fighters, if they needed an introduction, Kid Galahad, the white trunks, Trim with black Dickens, black trim with gold and the red gloves. Expect a fast start from the Scouser. Galahad immediately stepping on the toe of Dickens. Good left hand over the top from Dickens. IBF rehydration cause in effect to cause the fighters couldn't weigh more than 10 pounds over what they did yesterday at this morning's weigh in. Galahad used 9.9 .9 of those pounds and we know he was tight, you could see it, there was no hiding it. And when Dickens looked in his eyes, he knew it too. He felt that was first blood. Dickens is thrown the left hand straight to the body, looking to set up the left hand over the top with the disguise. He's rolling out, staying low on that exit, just trying to take the impact of those body punches from Galahad on the arms. Galahad's constantly stepping on his toe. 
which was Risotti Strachan. For Dickens, I mean. Going to the body well, and there it is to the chin. Dickens being pushed to the outside, back touches the ropes for the first time in the contest. Little right hook to just get him back to centre ring, works the body again. Just wonder whether that body work will pay dividends down the stretch if Galahad is as tight as you think. Galahad now switching to southpaw, shovels that long left into the body. Nice short, sharp jab from Galahad. It's landed a few times already. A lot jab there from Dickens, just shot the head up of the Sheffield fighter. Talked about the preparation of Walsh and, and Leewood for Jazza Dickens and those kind of attritional fights in the golden contract and that activity against two good switch hitters. He couldn't have had better preparation in the last 12 months coming into this. That's three times he's landed with that shot, same shot now, and he set it up by going to the body. Close opening rounders. We suspected it would be. How will this one develop down the stretch? Jazza Dickin just aggressively steps down the outside, fires down the middle. Again, looks for that long left hand. Galahad had his head off centre line, though. How surreal it must be for them to meet all these years later as men at the pinnacle of their profession. Galahad trying to walk Dickens down, shovels the right hand into the body. Dickens just looking for that check right hook off the ropes. A fascinating opening round, just draws to a close. Well, it's a cut over the left eye of Jazza Dickens. I think that was from a clash of heads. Just towards the end of the round, we were at 30 seconds to go, they both came into an exchange and the heads came very close together. And we'll try to get a look at that for you. Georgie Vaughan and Kerry Kay's in the corner there. Some experience, about as much as you're going to find. Got to keep your eyes closed, mate. Got to keep your eyes closed, mate. What was that, Matt? Clash of heads. And if you're going to have a, a cutsman in your corner, Kerry Kays is one of the men that you'd absolutely want in this position. Yeah, has been there so many times. That was a lovely left hand he was throwing, straight in chin, but he was setting it up earlier by going to the body. Clash your heads there, you could see it clear. Yeah, there was the head clash. I'm not convinced that was the one that caused the, the cut. There might be a couple in the round. But, uh, that is the danger with kick Alahad. You're going to get forearms, you're going to get heads being pushed in, Jazzy Dickens will know that, he will have prepared for it, it won't be a surprise to him, but it's how he now copes and how that cut develops as this fight goes on. Lovely left hand there from Dickens, shovels the left to the body. Both men are looking to go to the body to set up shots to the chin. Switches to Southport, Galahad. That's good from Dickinson, keeping his head turned to his left to keep that cut away from Galahad's head. He's keeping that left hand high as well, just to protect that cut. And perhaps Kerry Case has advised him just give it some time for the work to, to settle on him. He's walked into a long. Southpaw left hand there from Galahad, again shovels off the back of it now, just trying to press the advantage on Jazza Dickens. Dickens responds well though. Galahad has so many tools that he can use, so much variety and just what he opts to use, he's using an overriding jab now, he's jabbing over the lead hand of Dickens and it's been quite effective, it's just stopping Dickens in his tracks. Good left hand response. Galahad does, has been a little vulnerable to that left hand. Again, he steps in southpaw now. So many changes of looks in these first two rounds. There is blood just starting to pour again from that cut over the eye of Jazza Dickens. Left hand comes through the centre from Galahad. 
I feel like Dickens has gone away from his game plan here. He's getting a little bit drawn into Galahad's fight. He feels like Galahad might, might be getting on, getting on top a little bit, and he's just trying to respond. And in doing so, he's getting away from what was successful for him earlier on. Lifted up, just managed to avoid the uppercut. Counter from Dickens. He's tense in here. And just turning with him beautifully and opens up the valves with just 15 seconds of this second round. Been a good round for Galahad. seamlessly into his rhythm with no signs of the 18 months out of the ring. And Dickens is in a fight here. They're both in a fight. It's highly skilled, fast paced, and just a level of thought that, and thinking and speed of thought that both men have to have. And in, in an instant, they have to switch from defense to attack. Orthodox to southpaw, what you're being faced with. Fantastic for both fighters. Catch him every time. What's done the damage? Just that knee steady and open is wanting to hold. All them things they're talking about you wanting to do, he's holding and clinging on. So just keep it clean when he falls in and he's falling short with his shot. He's, he's losing confidence when he's throwing his shot. Just nice and sit on him. Just pull back and pop him straight. Don't have to throw because him yet unless he starts to dip, but keep it clean with them straight shots of your back. You know what I mean? Set off it up, bang bang straight. So you got to do with him. Deep breathe, a bit more water to go. Perfect. Keep it under control. Right, Susan, please. Just a little insight into the private conversations in the corner. Sense Andy that Dickens' team keen for him not to let Galahad get in any, any sort of rhythm here if he already hasn't done. Got to be a little more aggressive. And started the round well. As I said, Galahad just has so many tools. And whoops. And he. Oh, good luck. Good kind of hook. But he partially caught on the glove, I think, from Galahad. But Galahad makes you work every second of the round. He's always pressing on you with the feet, putting pressure with his feints and also with his hands. It was that pressure that forced young Jazzy Dickens to unravel as a 22-year-old when they first met for the British title. He is a different fighter tonight, but he will know that he's going to be pushed mentally and physically to his limits. Minute 30 gone in the third. Roll and just sunk the left hook in. Galahad from the orthodox stance has had good success from South Four too. Dickens again just shoveling that left hand in. The face of the scouser reddened, a little bit of blood from the nose. They've done some good work on that cut though. Left hand lands from Dickens. The, the main difference between the two of them was that Galahad shoving a lot more. And is occupying Dickens a lot, lot more than he is, and he's not having time to think just because Galahad just thrown that simple jab constantly. Dickens doesn't want to give up ground, but he's almost being forced to. In spots here, hangs on, and Michael Alexander just separates them again. Up over the top there from Dickens. Makes a full short that time, and Galahad counted.
Close your eyes, Chelsea. Close your eyes, keep it close. Just yeah. through your mouth, throw it out. Well, Kenny's doing that, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Guy don't throw them single shots, right? Yeah. And yeah. he's beating them. Yeah. But not when you get your feet in and you throw twos and threes. Okay. Even with one lance, the two or the two lands, yeah. okay? Single shots, he's catching it every time. He looks like he's being a busier man and doing the work, okay? Here in the words of Derry Matthews here, that was the head clash that caused the he's cut catching the weight. He's catching up the weight. You can feel him dropping, can't you? You can feel him. But you've got to win the round. Close your eye, close your eye. Just step to each other at the same time. The top of the head of Galahad just flicked the, the left eyebrow of Dickens. Kerry Kays has been called into action. Again, Galahad back a century, back on the jab, turning Dickens and leading the dance at this stage. Dickens is going to have to dig in, work his way back into this contest, trying to jab with him now. And as crucial that he doesn't become crushed under, under the pressure of knowing that this could be his last chance of fighting for a world title. This is his biggest moment of his career, and so far I have him two rounds down after winning the first. Top that just made Galahad stumble back. Notoriously good chin though for Galahad. Speaking to Jordan Gill a couple of weeks ago and said that you know, he's never ever seen Galahad so much as boast or, or standing hundreds of rounds of, of sparring over the years. We know he's rock solid upstairs, we know he's solid mentally. Some great body shots from Galahad as well here. That's better. Get your jab going for Dickens. Exchange body shots. Dickens just trying to step right off that jab. Struggling to get past that jab, isn't he? turn every time just gets stuck with those short shovels to the body and another one there's a lot to be said for Galahad standing on his arm Dickens foot you know he, he's unable to, to lean back or sway back from the moves because he's pinned to the floor and as long as he's getting away with it he's going to keep doing it because it's been good for it's been successful for him but the jab the jab is suffering them Again, just the most subtle of switches from Galahad. Dickens steps to him again, tries to keep the hands fine and tight, but Galahad in full flow. Look, shouting at it now from the Dickens corner by defeat. The referee just waves his hand to say, I see it. The right hand lead from Galahad, and again, the two just tie up. You see, Galahad's able to land that lead from the backhand because he's jabbing consistently and disguising it. When Dickens throws it, it's often being blocked or, 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 or avoided because there's no jab or no feint for it. And there is Cal Britt watching on, a man who held the IBF title and another man whose belt will feel he's up the grabs. Josh Warrington watching this ringside with Laura. He is indeed. Josh, let's get straight into it because Kid Galahad looks more aggressive today against Jazza than he ever did in the fight against you. Yeah, I think he's having to force a pace. Um, I think he's going to try to wear Jazza down. Um, just not throwing too much heavy punches, a lot of tip tapping punches, but it's making Jazza work. Jazza got that little cut early on from what looked like a head clash. How much is that going to affect him? I think it'll bother him a little bit, but uh, he hasn't got to that bothering. He's got to stay focused and stay switched on. But obviously, kids using a lot of spawning tactics as well. And um, that's only going to add to the cut as well. So he just, just got to make sure he forgets all about that and just stick to his own game plan. No problem. Thank you, Laura. Well, he did push Josh Warrington mighty close. Kid Galahad, it wasn't the best fight to watch. We have to admit that, but push for a rematch as well. Warrington wanted to move on. 
push for that unification with Zhu Shan, but because he only held the regular version of the WBA title, the IDF wouldn't sanction it. Warrington had to give that belt up, and how his year has changed. And he has got business to attend to of his own in September, but wouldn't he fancy a shot at the winner? And at the moment, King Galahad is moving himself into a solid lead here. Dickens working with him to the body, trying to step around him and find angles, but Galahad just turns with him. Inbuilt autopilot from the lines that took so many years for Brendan Ingle to develop at the Winker Bank. And again, orthodox for Galahad, the war of the front foot recommences. trying to get up on his toes now he isn't the the buzzsaw that he was six or seven years ago that much is is clear for those who have followed him but he's developed that skill set he's more compact he's a better puncher he's mentally stronger physically stronger he's been beaten to the punch in the greater portions of the round here complaints from matthews in the dickens corner that the punch was low no complaints from Dickens, though. Galahad so switched on, Andy. From the moment he walked down that ramp, he hasn't taken his eye off Galahad. He's just so locked in. And being so consistent with his jab and just boxing a really good fight, really smart fight here. Dickens making the space small, making it work when he is trying to rest and reorganise. Dickens again keeping tight, trying to shovel away to the body. But it's Galahad, he's letting his hands go in greater numbers. He's almost doubled Dickens' punch output through these first five rounds as the clock ticks away. Dickens just can't get no consistency going, no, no sustained success. Now Derry Matthews is spotting the, the treading on the front foot and he's shouting to Michael Alexander. When there's a southpaw fighting an orthodox fighter, there's always going to be some sort of stepping on the feet, but it seems too regular to be quite excessive, <laughs> to be a coincidence. And of course, you're not seeing it at home because you're seeing kind of from the torso up, but every six or seven seconds, those front feet are coming together and it's Galahad treading on that front foot of uh, Jazza Dickens. Is Derek Chisora, who's been wearing that face mask for yeah, about 10 years now, way yours, before the so pandemic. You're scoring more shots when you do the sand. Back of that, he'll throw more when you're when he's so far and you're throwing so far. He'll throw more. That's when he opens up more. There are the punch stats. Keep up, just keep up in it. But when you've got to do where it works, you've got to switch out for getting working. Point, deeper, and, uh, well, look at the numbers. They don't lie. Just a much, much higher output from Keith Galahad. That's just the uh, the jab in itself, Andy, and that really been the difference between them through the first. Certainly three or four. There's still time for Dickens. I've been in this position where he's in, losing important fights, and you can, in your own mind, you're thinking, I'm losing this. It's all gone out the window. My career's over. But there's still time for him to turn around. He's just got to compose himself and get back to his game plan, whatever it was that before this, before this, this fight started. So into the sixth, then. Well, hearing the Per Compu box go through 113 punches in that last round, he's starting to just turn the screw on Jazza Dickens. Again, just those uppercuts to the body as he steps forward, the short shots on the inside as Dickens tries to turn in the face of. The scouts are just getting busted up here, blood pouring from the nose, swellings under the eyes, the cut, of course. It's getting really tough, this, for Jazza. He's landed some good body shots in this round so far, Dickens. He never questioned his, his durability and his toughness in recent years. He's been through it all. 
he will stopped, get everything. He stopped from the, the long straight left to the body, which was setting up the left of the chin. He's got away from that. Nice shot left up a couple from Gallagher. So Gallagher, there's none of these shots. He's not putting a lot of power in any of these shots, Gallagher, but he's consistent with them. And he's throwing and he's picking and picking and picking and picking. Oh, left, uh, right hook counter there, Lappy. Dickens, Gallagher took it well, but he's been turned into the corner. Just a moment for Dickens to hang on to, perhaps. Can he capitalise? I feel like Gallagher's setting a trap here. Dickens leads with that left hand to the body, trying to just offer him a level change, feints his way into range. Galahad now jabs his way back to centre ring. Just pirouetting around each other. Nice up to the body there from Dickens. Well, I hate to say, you're a bit late to the party. Going to be more for that as, as early as the second round. Again, just countering to the body, Galahad. Dickens trying to bob and weave and offer him, but the pain now etched on his face. It's a bloody, battered mess. Left hand counter over the top, but he just can't put a dent in Galahad. He just walks forwards, walks through him, letting the hands go. What can you say if you're in that corner, George Vaughan? Squeeze your nose, breathe through your mouth. Proper boxing lineage. Derry Matthews in the corner of the Vaughan family. You know, the inventors of the, the Queensbury rules in the 1800s. So that okay. line of knowledge goes back a long, long way. Let's have a listen in if we can. <laughs> Through your mouth, Stop mate. Your Through your mouth, Jazz. Yeah. He's making little rounds, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well listen, okay, okay, but look, you're getting you're getting there, mate, right? And you're not throwing the shots. Yeah. So when we get there, we've got to throw. Don't move, do not move. Okay? Do not we've move. got to throw the shots. You're getting it. Having to G the man up, there is real despondency in that corner. Yeah, a lot of different voices as well in the corner. And I suspect his nose is broke because they're telling him to breathe through his mouth. He's got to find something, though, Dickens. He's got to find something, something from inside himself. He's got to change it up because what he's doing is not working. So he's got to walk forward and try and get Gallagher out of his out of his rhythm, out of his stride. He's got to do something to change the rhythm of this fight. Gallagher just never the the kind of fighter that really hurts you with. One shot, he just turns the screw, makes life difficult. Death by a thousand knives. Absolutely. The hottest of kitchens, and it's how cool the head can, can stay. And we know that Dickens is mentally strong, but he's right in deep here. Again, just sticks that left to the body, shovels the uppercut through the middle, catches Galahad clean, but again, just not really able to, to get his attention, no matter what he tries. Galahad, double jab. rough enough or attritional enough for him. Dickens is part to, to test out whether there were any real problems making the weight for it from Galahad's part. He did look incredibly gaunt yesterday. And whether that engine was a little suspect, we wonder whether a fast start from Dickens could find that out. He just hasn't been able to get going in consistent enough patches to really press Galahad and find out what he's made of. Just turning him, top shotting him with a jab at the moment. It's Gallagher who's, who's having the higher output and is pressing the action. It's from, you know, the greater number of punches. So that was ever the case. There's no signs of it. No, there's not. That's a good combination from Dickens. Left hand 
hand off the back of it too. Cole Gallagher with his chin up in the air for once. And a good override jab and then underneath too. Just a glimmer of hope and just perhaps something to draw confidence from for the Liverpool fighter. Galahad just switched off for a moment and reminded that he's in a world title fight here. He can stand like that, static in front of Galahad because he'd get picked off. There's a lot, like from Dickens, there's a lot of bobbing and weaving and fainting and, and, and advanced punching, like. I would like to see him do some simple basic stuff, like jabs, simple double jab right hand, or double jab left hand, one, two hook, just simple basic stuff. When you're fighting somebody like Galahad, who's all tricks, a bag of tricks, trying to befuddle you and blind you, sometimes the basics will beat those guys. Right, listen. He's having his little birds, do you understand? Yeah. But he's throwing his shots. He caught you one or two shoot shots because he didn't move your head. Do you understand? Deep yeah. breathe, deep breathe, deep breathe, deep breathe, deep breathe. He didn't move your head. Yeah. Just be relaxed. Just slip when you're throwing. Make it, when you're making a miss, you're tiring. Slow that hard down. Deep breathe. Come on. Slow down. Do you need first right up shot? Right, listen. Keep poking with that jab. Remember, he's moving and just sleeping in there. He's not getting about in front of him. He's not the first one of all time to sit together. Everything that I've ever talked to is a switch hit, masterclass. They're all screaming and shouting. It hasn't been perfection. Yeah, won a single round yet. You understand? Yeah, not a single round. It's been a real switch hit, masterclass, and he has put in a really, really solid performance. Is that just a fleeting moment for Dickens in the seventh? Is there something more to it? Left hand over the top of the low held jab of Galahad. He's just jabbing on the pivot. Dickens in and out with the left to the body, changed the levels up the second time, landed to the head. Yeah, look down and shut up. Another left lead. Uh, somewhere, somehow, he's just finding a response. And even if it's short-lived, it is a response. And he can draw some confidence and momentum from that. He's trying to turn and step around his man now, Dickens. Galahad working away on the inside, forcing Dickens to close up. This fight shows you the value of the fundamentals. Galahad's jab, simple one-twos, simple body shots, is, is what's separating the two of them right now, for me. It's the consistency of that, sticking with the basics. Not abandoning the jab. I just feel Dickens is giving everything here just to try and stay on level terms, even in these last three minutes or so. Galahad is working with him, but he's more comfortable in the storm. Such a high work rate, such high output. So many short little shots on the inside that you don't really see and they're innocuous, but they build and they accumulate and they tenderise, and that's what's happened to Jazza Dickens. He's been tenderised over these last eight rounds. And they win you rounds. And they win you rounds, what, of course. What this game is about. <laughs> Galahad steps to him again. Well, it was valiant from Dickens in that round. He just found a 
a little bit of success. Yeah, it's not last close by no means, but he has. He's gonna have, to have a massive finish, and he's he's got to maybe get a stoppage. He said over to Laura. Well, Josh Warrington is still alongside me, watching on that bike. Josh, there are moments in there, especially in the earlier rounds, where we saw Kid Galahad treading on the toes of Jazza Dickens. He did it to you in your fight, didn't he? Yeah. How annoying is that? It's frustrating because it's to take you off your game plan. Also, on easy, easy your balance as well. So, um, you know, he does it with, with, with that and thinking about it. He just he knows where to stand on your toes and put you off balance. So it's, it's a little bit frustrating, but he's had the one off to the free and he's not doing it as much now. So we'll see less of that. How does Jazza get back into this fight? So glimpses. He's got to pick up the pace. He's got to pick up the pace because that's what Galad's doing, dictating the pace. Okay, let's get back into it. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Laura. Josh Warrington knows the, uh, the pitfalls and the difficulty that is. Kid Galahad, who was in ferocious form that night, he still had really tough, tough work in front of him. The two very, very good wins that define his career. He's got another night that could do so early September against Maurizio Lara. But back here, can Jazza Dickens find something? It seems more and more unlikely as this contest wears on. Galahad just thumping that jab out in a rhythm maintaining the distance everything off that lead from orthodox and just at any point where you think dickens may get it, get back into this he'll just switch and change the the angles and as he does so there we'll talk about the kind of fight that could break a, a fighter's heart and i think we may be watching one here and it's a real shame because dickens is a fan favorite he's loved by all in the game that he is really really up against him having a short right on the inside but every time he has success Galahad just responds yeah I don't think there's any doubt in his heart he's going to be here to the end he'll fight down he'll go down on his shield but it's just one step ahead one step behind all the time and as I said earlier it's death by a thousand cuts, he's just picking these simple little shots and none of them are hard footing shots. But when you've got a broken nose, suspect a broken nose and two swollen eyes and cuts. Well, nowhere that he hasn't been before Dickens, but tonight's so much more important for him. Galahad just breaking him up now. Breaking his guard, breaking his will, breaking his spirit, perhaps in the last minute of the night. The white gloves of the Sheffield fighter covered in claret, his shorts too. Thumps another shot home. But at no point has Galahad really stepped on the gas and gone through the gears at any point. He seems comfortable at this kind of pace but you'd expect him at some point to try he's waiting for that moment where he feels Dickens shape go his senses him fading I think, he, I think he's feeling it now has a left hand over the top probably sensing it now but Galahad just letting those shots go to the body this is so reminiscent of what happened eight years ago when almost to the round the young boy in Yorkshire just unraveled Galahad will be sensing the same as we go into the championship round. There is Kelbrook, this man from Sheffield to hold the IBF world title. And whether we will see him back in action again. You forward, you forward. Right, listen to me. It's three round five. All you gotta do is go out and do exactly what you did in that round. Three your mouth, mate. Where it goes, you couldn't really ask more if you're Dominic Ingle for a real fighting performance than Kid Galahad is doing tonight. Composed, controlled. Never, never knocked out of his stride. Stood to his game plan, stood to the basics and, and stayed disciplined with it. Listen, every single round you've got to win big, okay? Come on! Every single round. Well, that was the voice of Derry Matthews, I think. Do your we all fight. know the position that that young man is in now. Needs a stoppage, okay. needs Do a, your fight. a boxing miracle. They have happened. Does he have the, the power in his hands? Does he have the will? Can he find something? So, so unlikely now. Hey, 
would be cruel fate were he to be stopped in the same round that he was when they first met for the British title all those years ago. He would be desperate to avoid that, looking for that whipping right hook over the top of the jab, but he's out of range and Galahad just poking, breaking him up with straight shots. Again, every time on the turn, just sticking him to the body. Left hand lands that time from Dickens. He's got his shape back, Dickens, Good for a moment. Is this a second wind? Gala comes straight back with his own hand and another there. And that turn the chin and just check the jaw of Dickens. He tries to turn and exit, but Galahad's feet have been absolutely brilliant. Yes, there's been some coming together with the feet and the head clash, but the movement, the turning, the angles, the shot selection, the composure, everything has been as good as you'd want it to be from someone to call themselves a world champion. I wonder what Josh Warrington will think watching this. No doubt we'll hear from him afterwards. Galahad again, long right and left of the body. Dickens responds, left hook upstairs, but just not a reaction, nothing to take confidence from. Even when he's landed the cleanest of shots, there's nothing more discouraging than that. You land your best shot and the guy comes straight back at you. And he's given him no rest, no rest by the tall. Gal has pouring on the pressure now. Uh, if you have any question marks at all over the conditioning, the mental state of Jazza Dickens, you found out all about it now because he's been pushed right to his horizons here. Trying to step off, trying to find some space, trying to find a punch from the guards. He's starting to wilt here. Alexander just comes in for a second. Uh, I think at this point it, it really is arbitrary. At this point deduction is so far clear that it would take an outright disqualification. It has been a problem, and I think there is a little more than coincidence that it's happened on occasion. And it's Galahad's risk to to take. He has pinned Dickens in these early portions of the rounds and has allowed him to let his hands go slowed a normally buzzsaw fighter almost to a standstill here but Dickens dipping bobbing weaving trying to find something and now Galahad himself trying to tee himself up for the finish 20 seconds to go round number 10 I have to say that the big difference between this fight and eight years ago is that Dickens on the, the wide consensus was ahead at the time he was stopped. He is simply nowhere near tonight. Galahad has been a, a different class of fighter altogether. Leave that, my mate. You've got to leave that, my mate. I'm going to lose the fight, Jesse. I'm going to lose the fight, Jesse. Don't step up. You've got to give it a little bit of touch, Danny. Everything you've got. Don't be waiting. Push it back. Push it back. Push it back. And then stop taking shots. Stop taking unnecessary shots. You've got to win. Stop taking unnecessary shots. Like a scene of a movie in that corner. The drama. Well, the hours they will have toiled together in the Merseyside gyms. The hours that he has worked to get to this point, and it's all just slipping away from him. He's battered and bruised and no advice in the world. I think at this point could give him what he needs. If he can find it, it's going to have to come from within and it's going to be an absolute miracle if he does so. Because we're looking at a really a beaten fighter who is digging in with everything that he's got just to hang in there at this late stage as Galahad is slowly grinding up through those gears. He's beaten physically but not spiritually. He's still in there and he's still going to take his chance if we can see one. 
taking left to the body, follows up with another, always keeping him turning. He is a spiteful fighter, Galahad, the way he's turning the screw here. And all those who started and described him as having that kind of bully mentality, seeing it in full effect, but it's been acted out with some finesse here throughout this contest as well. corner just calling for Dickens to work so how can he at this stage it's those body shots that are taking it that's why he doesn't have the energy now to push forward and the canvas is just splattered with the blood of one of the bravest scousers you're likely to see in a boxing ring and you know as a trainer Andy how much you can ask of your fighter he's gone above and beyond the call of duty and I think the only reason that they've left him in there is because of what's at stake tonight and because as you say this may well be his very last opportunity at the big time Galahad steps in again puts his hands together and falls and fires that Jazzy Dickens holds on tries to spoil and smother but Galahad is strong one of the one of the coolest or spiteful things that, about Galahad is that even though he's dominating this fight so much, he's not throwing any big hard shots where the referee might have a chance to step in or the corner might do the do, step in. He's just pounding and pounding and pounding on Dickens. Just a relentless forward march as we close out this 11th round. Dickens trying to dip, slip and roll back to centering. The Galahad holds on to him, doesn't let him. This is hard to watch now. I have to say, we've, we've, loved, we've loved commentating on some of the fights tonight. They've been great fun and entertaining. This has been more and more difficult as the fight's gone on. The state of that eye as well. Not even the great Kerry Kays can do anything about that. And Derry Matthews, I think we know what's happened there. He has called time on this contest. Overcomes Michael Alexander. Kerry Kays nods. And it is all over. A moment to celebrate for young kid Galahad, who finally becomes champion of the world. The late, great Brendan Ingle would have been proud of this young man to see him reach the pinnacle tonight. Another champion etched on the walls of the Winkerbank gym. Abdul Barry Awad, kid Galahad, can take a vow, son, because for all the battering and the difficulty in watching Jazza Dickens be broken up, that was a masterful world championship level performance. Clinical, clinical, dominant. And likely would last, last week, that's how you win the world title, you get a stoppage. I think the corner did the right thing there. As you said, it was becoming uncomfortable and hard to watch. And you have to credit Galahad for that. Fantastic performance, fantastic. Just the, all the doubts about him making weight. He was the one pushing the pace. He was the one throwing the, the, all the shots. Listen, I, I would hate to fight him. I would hate to fight him. I'm sure all the other fair boys out there are going to be feeling the exact same. And Lee Wood, of course, will have been watching that with interest. But look at the number of punches thrown. Over a thousand in 11 rounds for Kid Galahad. Landed 276 of them, and well, Dickens wasn't even really able to reach half of that. The jab was the key in the fight, Andy. Yeah, he was just so consistent with the jab, and fighters have a tendency to get away from the jab because it's the first punch you learn in a boxing gym. But the jab is the key to success in so many fights, if not all fights. And you, you mentioned that there were no really spiteful telling punches but i think everything was hitting him with force and intent by the end because he was a static target for maybe five of the last six rounds he had just a brief resurgence and a glimmer of hope i think it was seven or eight he just thought maybe just maybe but those hopes and dreams were, were very quickly stamped out by that young man who will potentially look back on this as the performance of his career that was the head clash that caused the cut in the early stage it was the first or the second round I think both of them just stepped to each other at the same time, looked to throw. I don't think there was any real intent there, but it really, really got worse and worse and worse. And by the end, I just think there was 
Well, there was no point continuing regardless of what was at stake because Jazza Dickens is, has got a life to lead and so is that young man as world champion now and the opportunities for him will open after he was pushing for that rematch with Josh Warrington. Now he is the man that holds the IBF featherweight world title. He can call some of the shots. How this division has changed in the last six months. Well, both fighters are standing by. I think David Diamante's got the scorecards, not that we need them now. He's ready to read out the official results. Let's hand you over to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Michael Alexander calls a halt to this contest at the end of round 11. The red corner was in no position to continue. Your winner by RSC, and the new IBF featherweight champion of the world from Sheffield, England, Keith Gillahan. Well, there it is, the belt that he has hunted for the better part of, of 18 months. He felt he'd done enough first time around against Josh Warrington it was close he definitely and he did enough tonight oh left enough, well left enough in the doubt where he got the stoppage and it was the right call in the end but what a dominant display and, and really showed everything that Kid Galahad is about you know so many tools so many weapons and usually picks the right moment to use to use the right tool you know um, and stuck to the basics, stuck to the basics, and showed how successful they can be. There is the team at the Ingalls gym celebrating a famous victory that will live long in the Winkerbank's memory. And what fights will that set up down the stretch? A bit of blood on the shirt of Eddie Hearn there, plenty on the canvas, a gruelling end to week two of what's been a fascinating night here at Fight Camp. Kid Galahad, the new IBF featherweight world champion. Lots more action to come next week, of course. Joshua Boatzi and Rickard Bolotniks will do battle in our headliner and closer for week number three. And then we head to Dallas for Virgil Ortiz. The undefeated Virgil Ortiz Jr. Virgil Ortiz Jr., the future has arrived at 147 pounds. He has everything going from the power, the discipline, the destruction. Eggins, Mean Machine, Kavayowska! He is unloading now. This man just has one thing on his mind, that's destruction and destroy. Here comes the pain. One of boxing's hottest prospects keeps the fire burning. Well, a truly dominant performance and I am delighted to say alongside me right now is the new featherweight champion of the world congratulations Thank that is an amazing performance that we just saw there you've been waiting a long time for this can you sum up your emotions I've been waiting 19 years for this and it's finally here finally got it IBF champion of the whole world not a little bit the whole world this doesn't say you're 
regular champion. This says world champion. That performance that you just put on out there, a lot of people were doubting you heading into this. People were saying that you hadn't been in the ring for 18 months. People were saying that you looked a little bit gaunt in the way in as well. Did you show him all that? Speculations in it, you know, people can think what they want. But I come to fight. I'm a full-time professional. I don't take no days off. And you've seen inside the ring, I box Jazza Dickens, who's probably, he will become a world champion 100%, no doubt, without a doubt. He'll be, he'll be a world champion. You know, I'm just over the moon. Thank you, Eddie Hearn. If it weren't for Eddie, I won't be in this position right now. Thank you to Zone TV. It's over the moon, man. We'll give you a second to catch your breath, because Eddie, obviously, what he'll want to know next is, well, you, I mean, you call the shots now. This is, this is you now with the IBF. Featherweight, title around your belt, literally on you. What does he do next? Who can go to next, Eddie? You know, firstly, uh, this, this young man is dedicated his life to the sport of boxing. I think if he would... Sweat. Totally. No, no, no tears. You know, and you've been sweat. out of the ring for a year and a half, but you ain't been out of the gym for one day. But did you see when I got in there, how tunnel vision I was, Eddie? Everyone else fell apart. Josh Warrington, Kanzu, they were all out lot shorter than me and they all fell apart. But look what I did in there today. You did it? 18 well, you... months and I went in there and smashed them from pillar to post. And what happened with them two, they got smashed from pillar to post. Barry, I want to ask you a little bit because <laughs> we caught up with you a little while ago and you were saying yeah. part of your motivation for this, to go out and win this, is, is the late, great Brendan Ingle yeah. and, and what it would mean to you to win it because he knew you could do it and he never doubted you, did he? 100%. You know, Brendan said to me, I'm going to win everything from Subbanon weight up to lightweight. And no one believed me, everyone doubted me. He says, you can be world champion at numerous weights. You know, before I met Brendan, I would have probably been locked up or in jail. He was the only person who would give me hope. And if it weren't for boxing, if it weren't for Eddie and the Zone TV, Brendan Ingle, my mum, I'd probably be locked up or dead. It was Nassim who told you where to go as well, isn't it? Nassim, I met him at the local mosque. I said to him, Naz, I want to be a champion like you. And he says to me, if you want to be a champion like me, you need to go to find the guy. He's got a gym, St. Thomas Boxing Club. And his name is Brendan Ingle, and he'll take you to a champion. And the rest is history. Went met Brendan, that's it. And now you're following in his footsteps and you yeah. used to travel every day on a bus to that gym, didn't you? Every single day, two buses. 45 minutes, I used to get for 5.45 to get there for 6.45. Every single day from the age of 12 years old. Talk about dedication. We know that fighters are dedicated, but you literally moved across the road from that gym, didn't you? So you didn't 100%. miss a moment. When I was 15, I moved out my, out my area. Brendan says, if you live in this area, you're going to end up locked up or dead. I lived in a crappy house at the bottom of the road with about five other boxers. There were rats and everything. I used to have a mattress on the floor. And I lived there from the age of 15 until I was 20, until I got enough money and I got my own house. Your family mean everything to you, you said that before. Yeah. How's your mum going to be celebrating this? She's over here somewhere, she's over the moon. <laughs> you know, it will come from nothing. And hopefully, you know, make a few quid out of this and get her a nice house <laughs> and get, get, out, get out of the area. Eddie, it's an amazing story. There's a lot of stories in, in fighting, but this one quite special. Absolutely, and, and pure dedication to the sport. You know, I think now, the chance is there for him to go and dominate the division or attempt to do so. It's going to be really difficult no, to beat. Gonna well, you're Eddie, going to get the chances. I always told you. You did. I'm going to dominate this division. You did. You're going to get the chances to do it. The rest is up to you. Domestically, it's red hot me, right now. As long as you tell me, you've got me. You give me the opportunity. I will make sure I clean up this division. Well, the opportunities will be there. That's it. They'll be put in front of you, and it's down to you. And Let I know me ask you won't be. Go on. Have I ever turned down a fight from you? No. Ever in the history, I always. No. I never and I know you won't. Down. So and we're going to have a nice defence in Sheffield yeah. later this year, and then you're going to get a chance to win another belt. And all of the belts, you'll get the opportunity to do it. That's it. You're going to be tough to beat, mate. No Barry, beat Barry who do you want next? Because we see Lee Wood last week, one out here against Zucan. I just beat the guy who beat Lee Wood. And look, this is IBF champion of the whole world. This is not a regular title. This ain't no Mickey Mouse title. This is the IBF champion of the world. Does it say regular anyway on this belt? It doesn't. No, it doesn't. Exactly, and that's the difference. <laughs> you know, if he can get him elevated to super champion, then we can do something. But I'll just beat the man who beat him. So, you know, I think Jazza should get a, a title shot at Lee Wood and see, see where it goes from there. I think Jazza could beat him. Jazza, I'm telling you now, will be world champion without Good a doubt. Good fire. Respect 100%. to him, brave as they come. Yeah. More okay. than brave. Listen, Barry, Kid Galahad, Thank you. it's around there, IBF, featherweight champion of, of the, the world. world. Amazing. Thank you. Um, congratulations to you. What a fight as well. Thank you. Eddie Hand, thank you so much. Go and thank enjoy you. yourself. You. Well done, Barry. Back to you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Now, Tony, I know you're very disappointed. Mm. Uh, 
obviously so, but after the first round, Galahad just really took control of the fight. Before the half on about how disappointed I am, I've got to give credit to Galahad tonight. He went in there and he done the job that he was supposed to do. Right. Uh, he, he stopped Jazza working. Uh, he made use of his, his tactics and, and he done really, really well. So congratulations to Kick Galahad tonight. He's fulfilled the childhood dream and, and I only want to give him credit. Uh, there's no excuses. There's nothing that can be said. He was really, really good tonight. He got the better shots off. You know, he's outworked me man at times. He, he's outmaneuvered them and Jazz has just got caught into the kick out our trap. Josh will go on now, wouldn't speak with us, and he knows all about that. But Josh was able to figure a way through it. But listen, he's a really good fighter. I'm absolutely heartbroken for Jazz Dickens, I really am. Yeah. And we, as a team, we made the decision there to get uh, get him out. The, the cut was horrendous. The damage that he suffered was, was massive. But this is boxing. And understand, you don't play boxing. Just look at that picture there. We're heartbroken in that corner. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely see he put his heart and soul into that fight, and yeah. you could see how much it meant to him the whole time. Josh, you must have been impressed by Galahad in there tonight. Yeah, 